To wash or not to wash? Does washing your fruits and vegetables make them any safer? Or were you washing away the vitamins and nutrients? Hmm, we'll talk about that today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code, every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Boom! Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. Uh, This is the weekly show for the methods, the techniques, the insights into better food and cooking. That's why we get together live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. And if you want to see what I'm cooking when we're not live and how I did it, then you should go to Chef Todd Moore on Instagram. Look, I got a new grill. Ah! Oh my goodness. Uh, I lived in on the eighth floor of an apartment building in downtown Baltimore. They don't let you grill in your eighth floor apartment. I haven't grilled anything in nine years. This is my new grill, a birthday gift from my mom. Thank you, mom. Uh, You are going to see some grilling for sure. Uh, If you want to look for some of the past videos, uh, go to the archive on Facebook as well. It's facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. I want you to notice the new schedule also. Take a screenshot if you want over the next two weeks because there are some big changes coming to the summer cooking schedule. So I can use that grill that I just showed you and there is a smoker on the way as well. So please take a screenshot, mark it down, whatever you gotta do, come back to the replay because we're still gonna be together live this Saturday, this coming Saturday at noon, but it's gonna be the last one on a Saturday. I'm gonna take a week's vacation. Heather and I are gonna go visit mom again. Uh, Was something we haven't taken a day off since Christmas. Uh, So it's uh, due to us in some regard, I think, uh, because I try to go back to my spreadsheet, my, my schedule, And by my count, we have been together for 106 out of the last 110 Saturdays. That's starting since March 26th. 2019 was when we started cooking together on Saturday. So we're going to change this up. I'd like to take a summer vacation, right? So... Next Tuesday's Carefree Cooks Code, canceled. I'm on vacation. We'll be back the following. But we're going to start a whole new outdoor cooking, grilling, smoking, marinating, dry rub, blah, 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 blah. That's going to be a whole arc through the summer that you are absolutely going to love. So it's going to start with the return of Thursday evening cooking at 6 p.m. Eastern on Thursday the 27th. Okay, you get it? Yeah, I don't understand it either, but (laughs) just keep, make sure your notifications are right and you'll see it pop up or go to webcookingclasses.com slash live and you can register for my alert system. Then we have to, because we're all carefree cooks, right? We create our own recipes. Uh, We bring our friends and family together. Uh, We learn every time we cook, creating our own cooking style because we practice pro methods. We wind up loving our cooking. It's a simple formula. That's how it goes. I'm so glad it worked. (laughs) Remember tech problems last week. I did the entire show last week, 30 minutes with the green light on telling me I'm cool only to go downstairs and Heather tell me, You weren't on texts from Don telling me you never made it. So I'm glad we're here today. We are here today, right? Let me make sure. Yeah. Okay. We're here today. Look, there's a lot of scary, you know, often misleading information, things that people put forward as facts, but they're really just ideas. People that tell you they're facts, but they're really fears. Not like be careful about something is not a fact. It it always reminds me of the um, promotions they do for your local evening news. Can the stuffing in your couch kill you? Tune in at 11. 
Answer is no. No, it, it, it can't kill you. <laughs> you know? Is there something hiding in your garage that could swallow your children? No, it's not. It's, it's, it's that fear, right, that they're doing. So today, I want to clear away any confusion. And right off the bat, I want to assure you that your food is safe. Okay? It is safe. It generally comes to you safe. Well, unless you mess that up. Unless you or another human being make it unsafe, because that's usually how it happens. It's a human being. And we're going to talk about how to protect yourself from yourself uh, uh, today. But first, I've got a what am I for you. I'm sorry, a true or false for you. Goes along with our topic. And the statement is, always brush, never wash your mushrooms because they absorb water. And I know I talked about this recently, but maybe you didn't see that episode, okay? So always brush, never wash your mushrooms because they absorb water. Tell me in the comment section, video freezing? Nah, it's just a joke in the comment section (laughs) below. So let me ask you, are you a little unsure about today's topic? Uh, people ask me these questions all the time. Which ones do you wash? Which ones don't you wash? Uh, are, you, are you washing off vitamins or minerals? I mean, wh- which fruits and vegetables do you think you need to wash and, and which ones shouldn't be? Could, could washing something away <coughs> um, ruin the nutrients of it? It's like I always hear about chicken. Don't wash raw chicken because it splatters all over your sink. Well, don't splatter! <laughs> that's a, that's an easy answer. So all this can be so confusing, but by the time that we're finished together today in less than 30 minutes, there's going to be no doubt in your mind from what, that what you should do from now on. It's another step toward breaking the carefree cooks code. So the, the question here is to wash or not to wash for that is the question. Let's start though, with a little background on what makes food potentially hazardous and a disclaimer, okay? So first, not all food is immediately and inherently dangerous, all right? Let's not sound all the alarms that the food chain is destroyed and your food comes to you unsafe. Food is good, okay? Our food is generally safe if you're getting it from safe sources and so on. I think that you can take some of the food safety ideas as fears out there. They're unfounded. And some of them are downright hysterical. Food is not dangerous. Food is not bad. Food doesn't always have a dangerous level of bacteria in it. What makes food dangerous ultimately is man. Is mankind A2? Brutai, (laughs) generally, it's a person that's going to contaminate your food. And I'll show you why this is true. Because for this, we got to call upon my old friend, Fat Tom. Fat Tom helps me remember all the things that can contribute to contaminating food and giving you a foodborne illness. And it's a terrible thing. So if you remember Fat Tom, you'll remember how to keep your food safe. F is for the food. To start out, you got to have some type of biological organism as a platform to develop, attract, or accept harmful bacteria, or B, a conduit for viruses. A is for acid. The best environment for bacteria to grow and contaminate your food is a low acidic environment. In a heavily acidic environment, most bacteria will die. This is why tomato sauces, barbecue sauces, citrus juices are generally safer items than other items. And that's why it's safe to hot water can, you know, the old ball jar type, your pickles, your tomatoes, your barbecue sauces, your vinegar brined beans and things like that because the acidic environment won't allow anaerobic bacteria to grow. This is also how you cook raw fish without heat using ceviche, right? And the fish is still safe. So acids play a big role in in the safety of your food. T is for temperature. Bacteria always grows more quickly at certain temperatures and it's destroyed or actually reduced to a safe level at other temperatures. Most food should be cooked to 165 degrees Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius and kept hot at 140 Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. 
If you got leftovers or if you're cooking for chicken salad the next day, let's say, if the item is to be chilled, like the shrimp I have in my fridge now that are about to get turned into shrimp salad, it needs to be brought down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit or about four and a half degrees Celsius as quickly as possible and held at that temperature through service. Temperature allows bacteria to grow or not. And temperature is controlled by humans. So if you're going to have your potato salad out at the outdoor 90 degree barbecue this summer, it's got to be in a bowl of ice. It's got to be kept cold through service. The next T is for time. The more time that food spends in the temperature danger zone, the more the bacteria gets to multiply. And bacteria doubles every 20 minutes exponentially. So it goes from just a few to millions and millions in just a few hours. This is again your barbecue this summer. <laughs> Do not leave the, the, even the cooked chicken that could be undercooked chicken out in 70 degree temperatures. This is why you don't defrost a steak on the counter overnight in the perfect bacteria zone. It's the human beings that make food unsafe by doing dumb things like that. I'm sorry but it is. <laughs> Leaving the bacteria able to grow is not the best way to treat your food. But anyway, the editorial aside, the O is for oxygen. Uh, most bacteria are aerobic. They need air. Now, there are anaerobic bacterium, the ones that grow without air, like botulism in canned goods or mold in jarred items, but generally bacteria need air. So when you vacuum pack something, when you have a vacuum tight container, even your Tupperware containers, plastic bags that you squeeze tight and burp all the air out of is safer than a plastic bag filled with air. Uh, the last letter is M and M is for moisture. Bacteria love a warm, moist environment to grow rather quickly. This is why dried beans and dried pasta are not potentially hazardous. There is no bacteria going to grow on your box of pasta. There's no water activity, it's called, for the bacteria to feed upon. So now, now that you know Fat Tom, like I do, you can start to make your own decisions about whether to wash your fruits or vegetables or not, right? What did you think? I was going to give you a list of every fruit and vegetable and say, yes, wash it. No, don't wash it. That's not teaching. <laughs> that, that's not get, imparting information. That's just a checklist, okay? I want to empower you with these ideas so then you make the decision. But here's the thing. There's something that Fat Tom isn't telling us. There is something that Fat Tom is leaving out. And again, it has to do with man, with mankind, because no matter how aware you are of the six elements that aid in bacterial growth in food, you could be sure there's an acid. You could be sure that it's cooked to the right temperature. You could be absolutely sure it was cooled to the right temperature for the right amount of time. It was kept in a vacuum bag to remove oxygen on another planet that has no oxygen, all right? <laughs> Just to be sure, but somebody can always come along and contaminate it. After all that, they can touch things with their hands, right? It's called cross-contamination. And two thirds of all foodborne illness are simply because somebody brought the bacteria with them and put it on the food. So the idea of washing it or, or not before it gets to you, yeah. But the very first thing you should do before you decide whether you're going to wash your fruits or vegetables is to wash your hands. <laughs> first, your hands are most probably dirtier than the fruit or vegetable. What an insult to them, right? But look here, I'm, I'm of course joking. <laughs> no, I'm, I, no, it's, it's true, but I'm making light of it. So look, here's the reason that we're together today. It, should you wash your fruits and vegetables or not? With all the opportunities to add bacteria, to grow bacteria through time and temperature, add it with your hands, uh, to ingest pesticides when you're trying to eat healthy. The answer is an absolutely positively every single time without doubt. Yes. Yes. You should always wash all your fruits and vegetables, especially if you're going to eat them raw. 
especially if they're going from the garden to your mouth. And there's a group, there's a group called the Environmental Working Group, and they keep a dirty dozen list of fruits and vegetables every year, things that are likely to have pesticide residue, or I won't even go into all the things that could potentially be in the dirt. But for 2021, their dirty dozen list is, to be honest, the same exact list as the last three or four years. It's strawberries, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, and potatoes. These are the things that you absolutely must wash, no doubt. And the more I read, <laughs> the more I realize that just rinsing them under cold water isn't enough. But I can't find a single expert out there. In, in the articles that I've read, nobody recommends those commercially available washes. It, it's snake wash, <laughs> snake oil wash. The really the best thing that you can do to assure the safety of your fruits and vegetables is to rub them, R rub them, not only rinse them under cold water, but rub the skins gently, the surfaces, get a, get a soft vegetable brush, get a, a cloth because the uneven surfaces in the skin of most fruits and vegetables can hide bacteria. I have three different vegetable brushes. One is tougher for a potato, all the way down to one is much softer for other things I won't tell you, uh, for, for a squash or things that have uh, nooks and crannies in them to get the bacteria out. Look, you don't need one of those commercial available washes. It's just, it's more plastic <laughs> to throw in the trash when you're done with the bottle. You just need a little elbow grease to scrub your items lightly. And also never use warm water. Okay, remember bacteria loves warmth and moisture and then you're gonna give it warm water. Always wash your fruits and vegetables in cold water. And Web Cooking Classes members, they know another trick that we use in the professional kitchen to retain the color, the texture, the nutrition of fresh vegetables, but at the same time limit or kill bacteria. If you're cooking white vegetables, if you're making potato salad, adding an acidic brine to the raw potatoes can not only reduce the bacteria to, to start out before you cook them, but it also adds a little bit of the flavor of the acid and the appearance because uh, acids brighten white vegetables. Contrary, baking soda has been shown to remove more pesticides than just plain water. A baking soda rinse will help you reduce the, those levels as well. Better than your commercially available rinse and web cooking classes members in lesson week five, they also know that baking soda keeps green vegetables greener. So my suggestion is not rinse things and necessarily rub them, but it's that you soak or wash your fruits and vegetables completely, submerge them in liquid with a little bit of acid, white vinegar or citrus, or just a touch of baking soda. Baking powder as well might work. Rub them gently with your hands or a brush and listen to Fat Tom. Use acids in your salads and your sauces to make them more safe. Cook things to precise internal temperatures using your thermometers. Cool them to precise temperatures as well in as little time as possible and you and your food will be much safer this summer. All the barbecues that you can go to scrutinize their food safety <laughs> a little bit. Like, like, like I said, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to alarm anybody. And, and this has nothing to do with COVID, okay? This, this is a class that I've taught on the culinary college level it, God, 10 years ago now? This is a class I taught in my own cooking school many years ago. So this is not, I'm not trying to be scary about COVID because the U.S. Centers for Disease Control says that there is absolutely no evidence to support transmission of COVID to food. It, it doesn't seem to be a surface thing. It's an air thing. But look, regardless you should always practice the safe food handling procedures that I've described to you today. Wash your hands thoroughly, often during the cooking process. You touch raw meat, go wash your hands. Then you touch the vegetables. Your cutting board uh, touches raw meat, wash it, then do something. You get the idea this cross-contamination is what happens to most contaminated food. And the poor farmer, it, we're blaming him. It's not his fault. 
He did everything he could. It's most probably the distributor or the guy on the loading dock or the, the refrigerator that broke down at your grocery store and they didn't tell you about it. These are the things that happen along the line. Food is not inherently bad, but what I'm really here to talk about today is foodborne illness. It, it's not the things that are going to kill you. It's the things that make you slightly ill for a few days. The, the things that make you feel crappy, <laughs> you know, in, 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 sorry, the literal sense. But now you know from Fat Tom that you're going to wash everything that you cook. You're going to cook to precise internal temperatures. You're going to bring your crock pot to, to the, the uh, potluck so that you keep things hot or get a chafing dish or some way to refresh it in, in and out of the oven to keep it at that service temperature. You're going to cool leftovers quickly and you're going to wash your hands all along the way. You have no control over what the farmer does. You have no control over the distribution of your food as long as you're not growing it yourself and you are the farmer, but you do have control over your personal hygiene and how you prepare food using the principles of Fat Tom. Let's see what's going on in our Carefree Cooks community, our private community for lifetime members of web cooking classes on the intranets. Uh, are they safe? Oh yeah, they're, they're, no doubt about it. Let's see who's cooking what. Oh my goodness, the, uh, the all the great Mother's Day cooking that was going on. I almost forgot about it. And hey, look, once again, you know, there's no better gift. Before I get to that, one, once again, there we go. There's no better gift to give someone than the gift of your time that you spent in the kitchen, regardless of what that dish is. It, the, the end result doesn't matter most of the time to me. It's like, wow, you took the time and effort to, to research it, buy the ingredients, do it. And the only thing better than giving the gift of your cooking to someone else on Mother's Day is bringing your kids into the kitchen. And it gives them a lifetime skill that makes them better adults. That's what I was getting to. Our buddy Bill Monsky, uh, Bill Monsky with you, uh, along with his son, they wanted to make dessert for Mother's Day. And being a carefree cook, it seems that Bill has passed those skills along because without a recipe, his son made a carefree crepes with banana cream cheese filling and used the bananas. Uh, I, I did strawberries foster, but he did a mixed berries foster that I just showed you on Saturday. Nicely done. That's awesome. That is a win, 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 win for me. Kids in the kitchen, improvising, cooking carefree, showing them the way to go, making gifts for mom, cooking with dad. Oh my goodness, is that not what cooking is about? I'm not, not, <coughs> I'm not going there today. Um, Dan spent the whole day in his garden planting, but he still found time to get in the kitchen and express his mom appreciation a word I just made up, mom appreciation, uh, gorgeous coho salmon fillets in a carefree style Mexican dish with some guacamole. It's just kind of a, a, a an assembled, a composed niçois kind of thing. Gorgeous job, really nice. Ah, the uh, court cook to her royal majesty is in town again. John Brown is knocking it down. Uh, his cooking, it just keeps getting better and better cooking for his queen. He's really done it this time. Uh, a multicolor peppercorn rub steak, red chili chimichurri sauce. If you haven't said red chili chimichurri sauce, you should say it. It's, it's actually, it's a lot of fun to say. Um, but then you should go out and make it red chili chimichurri sauce, uh, with colossal shrimp. Uh, but he didn't stop there because dessert was fresh fruit in, with cream cheese inside a fresh coconut half. You know, queen, uh, I'm thinking John should be knighted. At, at some point, the dude needs to be knighted. <laughs> uh, Lily had her son help her in the kitchen in preparing Mother's Day lunch together. Well, that's a nice gift in itself, cooking with your son. Uh, this whole spread, baked potato with all fillings kind of bar, fixins bar, uh, corn muffins, pigs in blankets, mini veggie quiches, Italian sausages. And then for dinner, Lily had another great menu uh, that all ended with a cheesecake. But I only got one question about this, Lily. When do they cook for you? <laughs> On Father's Day? <laughs> 
<laughs> in Lily's house, she gets to sit with her feet up on Father's Day, maybe. We'll help. Uh, Wayne had another really fancy idea for Mother's Day. This was fantastic. Create a high tea for his wife and his mother, which I should explain. I, I believe that's two people. He, he, so he did this great buffet for his wife and his mother is two different people. It's a curried crab salad on brioche. Curried crab salad, that's fantastic. Brie on toasted baguettes, love it. A uh, little fig jam on there maybe or something sweet. Cucumber sandwiches that go with high tea with mint and dill. A Spanish san, san, uh, sandwich with fig jam and serrano ham. Uh, a muffaletta with olives, capers, tapenade. Wow. What a spread. Oh my goodness. Are you hungry now? Are you hungry seeing what our Carefree Cooks community did for Mother's Day? And what? Fourth of July is coming up. Outdoor cooking season is coming up and I am ready to tackle it with you. Look, I love seeing food as gifts. I, actually, I love seeing the act of cooking as a gift for someone you love. So it doesn't really matter what you cook, like I said. And that's pretty much our mantra around here. You know, it's not what you cook. It's how you cook it. It's, it's how you go about it. So find the foods that mom loves or dad loves Father's Day coming up. Cook them in a dependable method that you're confident in. You, you only need one to be great. You can get 13 to be really, really good. Uh, and you've got the makings of a great gift. Put it all together and the time that you spent doing it is way better than the time that you spent buying it. Uh, let's go back to this here. Should you only brush your mushrooms and never wash them? Are you kidding me? Do you have any idea what mushrooms grow in? I'm so tired of people telling me that they don't wash their mushrooms. They only brush them because somehow the mushrooms absorb the water. Look, go do it. Alton Brown did this two decades ago. He took the same weight of mushrooms. He soaked some of them and he didn't soak the other one. They don't absorb water. It's empirically done. You can do it. What they do do, mushrooms, do do, yeah, do do. They, they, they grow in dirt with lots of fertilizer. And when I say do do, I mean manure. That they, they are shoveled on manure. Always, always, always wash, soak your mushrooms. They are very dirty and they do not absorb mushrooms. They will weigh the same no matter what. Hey, look, if you know somebody who's concerned about the safety of their food, someone who is actually really worried about causing illness or making themselves ill, maybe it's because of the stress over it. It's not that bad. So go ahead, like, share, love this video. Tell them that they can learn the truth about Fat Tom and control the safety of their food also. And look, if you'd like to know how to avoid the top three mistakes that everyone makes when selecting fresh ingredients, if you would like to know what is the freshest, most flavorful, most nutritious items that you should look for at your market, if you would like to know how to stop wasting food that spoils before you cook it, or how to store your food so you're protect that investment along with how to use herbs and spices to create flavor profiles. These are all things I go into more deeply. These are topics in my free online class this week. It's buy fresh, cook simple, eat well, five simple steps toward easy, healthy cooking. Go to webcookingclasses.com slash fresh to find a class time that's good for you. So ah, thanks for being with me, everybody. Until next Tuesday, where we take even more steps towards safely cracking the Carefree Cooks Code. This is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your safe cooking success. Bye, everyone.